Item number SCP-022 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures A vault door has been installed following Incident 022-827 to seal SCP-022. It is to remain locked at all times, with the sole exception being the appearance of an instance of SCP-022-1. The original door to SCP-022 was destroyed during Incident 022-827 with attempts at replacement being met with failure. Security cameras have been installed to monitor for instances of SCP-022-1. In the event that an instance of SCP-022-1 appears, automated systems should incinerate it the moment it leaves SCP-022. At this point, the vault door may be unlocked to admit cleanup crews. Should the automated systems fail to destroy the instance of SCP-022-1, Response teams are cleared to enter and neutralize it. Under no circumstances may any living human enter SCP-022 except with the order of Class IV personnel for testing purposes. Class IV personnel may also order instances of SCP-022-1 to be captured and held. However, they may not be removed from SCP-022 containment facilities. SCP-022 is a morgue in the basement of hospital in Great Britain. Until 1980, there were no reported anomalous occurrences within the morgue. Reports of strange activity were first received in November of 1980. The area was soon quarantined by the Foundation, with an official story being released that the entire building had been condemned. The reason for the sudden manifestation of its strange properties remains under investigation. Periodically. A random drawer within the morgue will open to reveal a cadaver under a covered sheet. After approximately six minutes open, the cadaver will animate and attempt to leave the morgue. At this point, the cadaver is given the designation SCP-022-1. In some cases, the cadaver will be too damaged or decomposed to successfully exit SCP-022 or even rise from the table it lies on. In this case, SCP-022-1 will typically struggle and twitch on the table until expiration occurs. Should an instance of SCP-022-1 expire while remaining on the table, the table slides back into the drawer, which then shuts. Reports indicate that the scent of burnt tissue is evident immediately following such an event. The energy source that sustains instances of SCP-022-1 is currently unknown. Instances do not breathe, eat, or sleep and their bodies produce no heat. Analysis of SCP-022-1 following expiration has discovered no abnormal organs or chemicals present. They appear to be fully human cadavers. Instances also possess physical strength that exceeds that of normal humans. Though direct testing has proven problematic, researchers estimate the strength increase to be approximately 500 newtons or 112 pounds of lifting force greater than what one would expect of a human body sharing a similar condition. Analysis is underway to determine if this effect is connected to the unknown power source or if it is an entirely separate phenomenon. When body parts are severed from SCP-022-1, the portion with the greatest mass retains its effects. All other pieces become inert. The structure of the head or brain does not neutralize SCP-022-1. Instead, the lower torso and limbs remain animate. Complete tissue destruction appears to be the only method of successfully terminating instances of SCP-022-1. Left alone, instances of SCP-022-1 will simply expire. All motion ceases and they appear to become normal cadavers again. The amount of time this takes depends on how damaged the body is and the rate of decomposition. It could take anywhere between two days and three weeks. Investigation has revealed that the bodies acting as SCP-022-1 match the description of cadavers reported to have been stolen from morgues across the country. The mechanism for this transfer is currently being researched. Adding any new matter to SCP-022 has thus far proved impossible. Any object that enters SCP-022 disappears shortly after passing through the door, leaving no trace. This includes inanimate objects and biological specimens. See Addendum 022-001 and 022-002. So long as an instance of SCP-022-1 possesses a functioning mouth, tongue, and trachea, it is able to communicate fully with researchers. 
See Interview Log 022-751 for details. Addendum 022-001 A request had been submitted to create a new entrance to SCP-022 by removing a portion of the south wall. Request pending approval. Addendum 022-002 A pile of matter was discovered on the floor of the room directly above SCP-022. It appeared to contain all matter that had been sent into SCP-022, with the exception of humans. All materials appeared broken or worn down. Metallic components were covered in large amounts of rust, with all biological parts being in various stages of decomposition. Testing revealed that the time between inserting an object into SCP-022 and it reappearing above to be precisely 183 seconds. Humans who enter, however, do not appear in said pile. Instead, humans appear to become integrated into the morgue, and may later animate as instances of SCP-022-1. Interview Log 022-751 Each of the following interviews begin in much the same way. The instance of SCP-022-1 will typically be hysterical until Foundation personnel are able to calm or restrain them. These portions have been omitted. Date: March 1980 Interviewee SCP-022-1-2 Interviewer Dr. Notes SCP-022-1-2 was the second instance of SCP-022-1 that the Foundation discovered, the first having been destroyed on-site by Foundation agents. SCP-022-1-2 had the body of an Asian male, approximately 54 years old. Its chest had been stitched up, evidence of an autopsy. Begin Log Please identify yourself. My… my name is John. What… what the hell's going on? That's what we're trying to figure out, John. How did you get to this… state? I, I… I don't know. I was driving my car, coming home from… never mind. I was driving, and I crashed. Then what happened? Nothing. I woke up here. Please. This has to be a… So you remember being in a car accident that woke up here in a morgue? Do you have any idea how you got here? I didn't get here. Don't you get it? This isn't me. I'm not me. What do you mean, you aren't you? At this point, SCP-022-1-2 became severely agitated and had to be physically restrained. This required six agents, due to the strength increase associated with instances of SCP-022-1. Eventually, SCP-022-1-2 was calmed and the interview proceeded. Now would you please explain what you meant? This. Is. Not. Me. I saw my reflection in the steel. I'm not some old Asian fuck. This isn't me. End log. Following the last statement, SCP-022-1-2 began to smash its head against the wall. Once further restrained, it began to scream unintelligibly for several hours before falling silent. It continued to struggle, though apparently unable to speak, for an additional six days until it finally ceased motion. During this time it continued decomposing at a natural rate. An examination of the body following this interview was unable to determine a cause of death, as many of the internal organs had been removed. The only injury that did not appear to be a result of a previous surgery or autopsy was the damaged trachea. Date: March 1980 Interviewee SCP-022-1-5 Interviewer Dr. Notes: SCP-022-1-5 animated shortly after D-5619 was sent into SCP-022 and subsequently disappeared. SCP-022-1-5 had the body of an approximately 12-year-old female, missing its right arm and a large portion of its torso. Following the incident with SCP-022-1-3, all instances of SCP-022-1 are physically restrained before being introduced to valuable personnel, with SCP-022-1-5 being no exception. Please state your name. What did you bastards do to me? Please state your name. What the fuck did you do to me? We have done nothing to you. Now please state your name. You know who I fucking am. Refresh my memory then, please. I'm the guinea pig you just fucked up. Don't tell me you forgot me, Dr. Asshole. 
Are you D-5619? In the flesh, and for your information, jackass, my name is… Now change me back, you son of a bitch! Change me fucking back! End log. At this point, Doctor… Ask SCP-022-1-5 several questions to verify its identity. Though its identity was confirmed to be that of D-5619, no further useful information was gained from SCP-022-1-5. It was kept in a holding cell until expiring two days later. After three weeks, the body of D-5619 animated as SCP-022-1-7. In a brief interview with SCP-022-1-7, it claimed to be an 89-year-old female. <laughs>